2022 Atlantic hurricane season has been projected to be above normal. This has been linked to the La Nina event, presently ongoing. The Barbados Government Information Service had a chat with senior meteorologist Samelka Chapman at the Barbados Meteorological Services to find out what this means for Barbados and how we should prepare. So over the last century and a half, um, since there have been records of tropical cyclones passing close to Barbados, when we look at climatological periods, this is a 30-year period. So from the period 1851 to 1880, straight to the final period 1991 to 2020, we've seen a significant increase in tropical cyclones passing 50 kilometers or less to Barbados. So we've seen throughout the period from 1851 to 2010, just one or two tropical cyclones passing about 50 kilometers of Barbados. But in the last climatological period, 1991 to 2020, we've seen up to six tropical cyclones passing within 50 kilometers of Barbados, and that is a significant increase, which means the likelihood of us being impacted um, by a tropical cyclone appears to be higher. Could you continue in terms of explaining what is meant by the above normal season that we are expecting this year? We look at climatological averages this 30 year period to see what's expected in a 30 year period and then and then compare it towards the projections for a particular year if it will be above the norm or below the norm and the 30 year period that we are using would be 1991 to 2020. So for that period, we've seen an average of 14 named storms, seven of those are hurricanes, and three of those being category three or higher systems, which we, can, which we call major hurricanes. The major organizations which do hurricane predictions for the Atlantic, Colorado State, um, Tropical Storm Risk, the University of, the University of Arizona and the NOAA, um, we've looked at those predictions for this hurricane season and they have all, they have all with the exception of Arizona State, predicted above normal activity for the year. Arizona State, their predictions are suggesting that it would be similar to the climatological norm. There are a number of factors which contribute to whether a hurricane season in the Atlantic is above normal or below normal. The main one that we look at is the ENSO, which is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. And this is where we speak about La Nina. Um, this, this oscillation is an event which occurs in the Central and Eastern Pacific. We're in Barbados, we're in the Atlantic, we're in the Caribbean. So you want to know why are we talking about this feature that's occurring in the Pacific mm -hmm. and how does it affect us? This feature occurs in the Eastern and Central Pacific where sea surface temperatures are above normal. That's when we consider it an El Nino year or below normal when we consider it a La Nina year, which we are currently experiencing or when they're just neutral, they're the, what you normally expect, and we call that a neutral year. So this has a ripple effect across the globe. So when it's, a, when it's an El Nino year, the surface temperatures are above normal in the Central and Eastern Pacific. These temperatures are warm, and the air just above the sea surface is warm because of the sea surface temperatures. As you know, generally, warm air rises. So at this time, the air is warm, it starts to rise. When, the, when air rises, clouds form. So you have more formation of clouds, more rainfall in the Central and Eastern Pacific during uh, El Nino event. This has a ripple effect to the Caribbean where the opposite occurs. So then we have cooler temperatures during the El Nino event and we have sinking air which is the opposite warm air rises cold air sinks and as I mentioned we need warm air for cloud development so then we have a subsidence what we call a subsidence pattern where you don't see as much cloud development so with La Nina La Nina is El Nino's sister it's the opposite so in the central and eastern Pacific 
sea surface temperatures are slightly cooler therefore the air above the surface is cooler and cool air sinks and therefore less cloud development in the central and eastern pacific flip side us in the caribbean we have warmer sea surface temperatures warm air rising more cloud development additionally to that during la nina years which we are experiencing as i mentioned you have less wind shear in the caribbean so normally when we talk about hurricane development you hear things all the time like what's the shear what's the shear like what's the wind shear as it relates to a hurricane and you hear about sea surface temperatures so then we now have those two ingredients which we normally like for hurricane development wind shear and warm sea surface temperatures is the general characteristics of what's happening in the Atlantic and the Caribbean where we are located in Barbados. Therefore, let me just pull it all together. We see that during a La Nina year, we generally expect to have more tropical cyclone, which is hurricanes and storms developing in our area. We also generally expect to have a wetter rainy season in Barbados during La Nina years. Now, with all these projections predicted for this year, and even in previous years, my office will usually issue, you will usually hear something like an information statement. My office is monitoring a system. And then at some point that is later upgraded to a watch or a warning. Could you explain a bit about these statements and watches and warnings that are being issued, what it means for Barbados, and then what actions should the public take when they hear of these various um, statements and so on. Okay, so here at the BMS, we monitor all systems coming off of the coast of Africa, across the Atlantic. Um, we have, we generally monitor tropical waves, and those are what normally develop into tropical storms or hurricanes which can affect the island if we see a strong tropical wave with the potential of developing into a system we may we would issue an information statement or you might hear us call it an advisory which kind of just gives you information a heads up which ties into our impact based forecasting so you want to get the public to know early what to expect so that you can start to just think about it be aware of the situation that's where you're at with information statements so we might say something like we're monitoring a strong tropical wave in the atlantic to the east of barbados and we would give the location you might probably have attached a graphic with the satellite imagery and say that this system is expected in the area um, on x date um, we would mention if it's expected to develop and if we think that it might develop before it reaches the island. Yeah. If a system, if a tropical wave does develop into a tropical storm or a hurricane to the east of Barbados, whether it's expected to impact us or not, we will continue to issue information statements on that system until it is no longer a threat or a possible threat to us. That way the public continues to be aware and you're not hearing information about a storm to the east of the island, even if it might veer and go very far north. Um, and you're wondering what's happening in my office, just gives you that update. That's our information statements. Those normally happen every 24 hours, unless there is something significant which changes the timing. If we see a tropical storm or hurricane or potential system, expecting to affect the island the potential systems are called potential tropical cyclones um, we would issue within the next 48 hours expected to affect Barbados we will issue a tropical storm or a hurricane depending on the system watch for the island so we are saying now start to prepare in 48 hours or less we expect to experience either a tropical storm for tropical storm force winds or hurricane winds for Barbados according to the advisory so tropical storm so we will have a tropical storm watch in 36 hours if you're expected to be in, still expected to be impacted by a tropical storm or hurricane in 36 hours we would upgrade the watch to a warning 
and at this stage we are saying we are expecting um, hurricane or storm force winds to affect the island to, con to continue to prepare for that impact and at this stage you should be kind of like closing in on getting everything together you are given 48 hours notice so you start your preparation at 36 hours you are expected to take action so you start taking action you start putting up your shutters you ensure that you have everything you need for your emergency plans in place you're taking actions because the threat is imminent that's what a warning is that we are definitely expecting that and that hurricane or storm warning will remain in place until the threat has diminished whether it is a case where the system changes track the system weakens or the system has already impacted the island and therefore we no longer have a threat of storm force or hurricane force winds. We currently have impact based forecasting here at the Met Office. We've introduced it since 2020 and continue to build on it so that the public is better aware of what is going on. So what impact based forecasting is, it is telling you no longer what the weather will be so I'm no longer telling you, oh, expect 75 millimeters of rainfall, but what would be the impacts of the weather? So you would hear us using language like um, the possibility of runoff on the road or pooling when we issue a flood watch or warning or pooling on the roads or debris. That is the kind of language that we are moving towards and that is what impact-based forecasting is. Could you tell us a bit now, I know we recently got a new radar met office. Could you tell us a bit about how that will assist in making predictions and so on through this hurricane season and beyond? Right, so we do have the new dual polar radar. I would not go into too much of detail as it relates to what is dual polar as it relates to the radar. But how is this different from the previous radar? We are starting to we have additional products which help us to better identify the rainfall which is occurring on island and offshore up to 400 kilometers so we can see what is coming um, as you saw in the previous picture with the center of ALSA which would have passed um, just to the south of Barbados we will get those kind of images and they will be a little more detailed um, with the radar data you do get information as it relates to wind and um, with the dual polar there will be slight um, enhancement as it relates to the information we see so we'll get better idea of if there are funnel clouds around and that kind of stuff so we are excited to dive right into the wet season using our radar we got a little taste um, a few weeks ago when they had the showers um, we saw the differences and the changes so we tweaking to improve of course but we're looking forward to seeing how the wet season goes with the radar and finally, is there any advice which you want to offer for Barbadians going into this hurricane season? Um, yes, I would like to say just be prepared. Um, it is going to be above normal hurricane season. So make your relevant plans and preparations before the season starts. Well, that's pretty much here. So just start having your 10 items and that kind of stuff and your emergency plans in place. And remember, it only takes one system to affect us to have a significant impact on the island. Well I just want to say thank you for joining us and I encourage everyone to make the necessary preparations and stay safe.